Are you ready for the word? Yeah. Open up your Bibles. Yeah. Go with me to John chapter 14. If you notice that there's some construction happening outside, we, we were breaking stuff. I told you I, the, the one thing I'm good at is breaking stuff. And uh, the, the, everybody was, was breaking stuff this week because they're going to be constructing something, a, a new fence tomorrow. And it's the beginning of, uh, of the renovations. Now, there's still a lot of work to do. We still got engineers working and, it, it's, uh, and uh, architects that are going over the plans and the details. Next week, I'm going to talk an overview about what it's going to look like and what we're going to do. But how many believe that, that it's just time to build? Amen. It's time to build and to bless. That's the word that the Lord gave us. That we're going to build, you know, because it's not just about us. It's about those that come after us. Amen. And this, this, this facility, this church, this building has served us well, and it deserves as much love as we could give it. Amen. How many thank God for faith pleases God, church? How, you all, how we have come in this place and we've met the Lord, how we've been touched and saved and blessed, how we offered up our marriages before God at these altars. Amen. How our children met Jesus Christ here. How people have been healed. I mean, I thank God for this house of faith. Amen. And it's just time to build and to bless. And I'm, I'm believing God. And this is my confession. This is my faith. And this is the way it's going to be. Amen. That before 2020, all the exterior renovations will be done in this church completely. Amen. That we're going to look completely different. It's going to take a lot of money. It's going to take a lot of wisdom. It's going to take a, 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 just God's favor. Amen. But I believe it's going to be done. I expect it to be done. So it's going to be done. Amen. I, I have faith for that. How many of you have faith for that too? And I'm, 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 I'm believing God that God is supernaturally going to increase every single one of you. So that you could be the ones that God uses to build his house here in Harlingen, Texas. Amen. Amen. How many of you want that anointing to come upon your life? Amen. I believe it's already, it's already flowing in Jesus' name. You know, I thank God for 2019. It's been a blessed year. But I believe that the rest of the year is going to be even greater. Amen. That we're going to increase. We're going from faith to faith. Amen. That you haven't seen anything yet. This is just the beginning of greater blessings in Jesus' name. That you're going to see your business is going to grow. Opportunities are going to increase. Prosperity is going to flow through your life in Jesus' name. You know, I remember a word that the Lord gave, gave my wife. The Lord told my wife that millions of dollars are going to flow through her hands. Amen. How many of you believe God for that word as well? Amen. That money is going to come in Jesus' name. But we know that it's for the working, of, it's for the, the, the preaching of the gospel. It's for the ministry. And so right now people are watching. You guys, we love you. We bless you. But there are people that love you so much that they sowed so that we could buy that airtime and preach to you today. Amen. So what you're actually receiving right now is an act of love from people that you may never even know. But they love you in the name of Jesus. And they're, you know, just their act of faith shows you the love of God. Amen. Hallelujah. How many thank God for the preaching of the gospel? Amen. And I want to share this, this word with you. If, you. if you can, go with me to John chapter 14, beginning verse 12. Go and put it on the screen. John 14, 12. Most surely I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do. Because I go to my Father. Everybody say greater. greater. One more time, greater. greater. See, that's the expectation of Jesus Christ for your life. You might not have great expectations for your life. You might think, well, I just want to make it through life. I just want to get someplace. You might not have big vision and big dreams, but Jesus has even greater dreams than you can even think about or imagine. The Bible says that God will do far greater than you can ask, think, or imagine. Whatever you are thinking, God's thoughts over your life are even bigger and greater. Amen. What he will do for you 
is beyond your imagination. God can bless you like no man can bless you. God can lift you up where no man can take you. God is the author and the source of every blessing. And the word of God says, Jesus said, the works that I do, healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out devils, speaking words of wisdom, words of knowledge, hallelujah, multiplying the loaves and the fishes, calling in the fish to, to jump into the net and to try to sink the boat, speaking to the wind and the waves and the storms to cease, where everything submits to the name of Jesus. Jesus said, the works that I do greater, you will do. Somebody shout greater. Don't limit yourself to your abilities. When you have spiritual help, don't limit yourself to physical abilities. When there is things happening in the spirit and power waiting for you to tap into, to take you to places you've never been before, where the rest of the world operates in the natural realm according to how strong they are. We are not operating according to how strong we are. We are operating according to how strong he is. And if we will begin to tap into that power and tap into that anointing and raise our faith to begin to believe God that he could do a greater thing in my life, there's no limit what God can do for you. No limit what God can, how God can bless you. You might think, oh, I'm just small potatoes. You're not small potatoes. You are a son of God. The Bible says the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of you. When you walk into a place, you being a son of God, the spirit of God walks with you. The angels of the Lord encampeth around you. No weapon formed against you will prosper. God is on your side. The Holy Spirit will give you wisdom and knowledge, and he will help you in whatever you do. The Word of God says that whatever you touch will prosper. Touch your neighbor right now. Just touch them. It says they will prosper. Because there's a, the, the greater, the greater things, the greater, because the greater one is with you. The greater one is with you, amen. And it, it, so don't limit what God can do in your life. Don't limit how far God can take you and, and what God can do through your life. Begin to believe God. The only limit, there's only two, limit, two things that will keep you back. Time and faith. If you're not willing to use your faith and you're not willing to hold on to your faith, God can never take you to where he wants to take you. Time and faith. Do you have faith for that? To speak about doing a construction that takes hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars when you don't have any of that. I don't have it, but I have faith for it. The Word of God says, come and buy with no money. I can't tell you how many times the Lord has blessed us and helped us and, and prospered us when it looked like there was no way God made a way. There was a time when my wife, we, you know, because we, we, we wouldn't tell everybody everything that's going on because you tell, you know, if you tell enough people your problems, they'll run away from you. If all you have is a problem, nobody likes people with just problems. And, and, you know, we as pastors and ministers are responsible for the, for the, the church. And, and I remember one pastor telling me that whenever something breaks in the church, usually it costs $10,000 to fix. You thought $100 to fix your, 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 your dryer was a lot. Try managing a church this size. And, uh, you know, it's nice that you got people to your left and to your right. But, you know... We were doing services with like two rows full. 
and just the, the place was empty. And we had bills and expenses that were, were outrageous. I remember there was a time where we, the, the electric bill in this, in this facility, right now, and it, it's, it's better because we changed out and we got energy efficient. But back then, we would spend seven to 10000 I mean, air conditioning costs. It costs. And, and we got big machines here. And uh, we didn't have, I think we, we owed something like $12,000 to the electric company, and it was due. It was never past due. It was always due. And, and just, you know, my wife is anointed. She's anointed to use her faith. She's anointed to not speak doubt and fear. That she's anointed. You're not going to find a better warrior to stand with you when you're going through the tough time than my wife. When she says, let me pray for you, get ready. Something's going to happen. She's a woman of God. Amen. And, you know, just all these things. And me and my wife, we hadn't spent time together. You know, we hadn't gone away for, it had been years. And, and I hadn't seen her, and she had been working, and I'd been working. And, and I said, honey, I know we got all these problems, and I know we got all this stuff, and we don't have the answer. We're going to trust God on this thing. But, honey, let's go. Let's go. We, got, we, got, we had $300, enough to buy, you know, to, to take a, uh, our honeymoon trip. We went to our honeymoon. When we got married, when we were 19, our honeymoon was San Antonio. I said, let's go to San Antonio again. And so she said, but we got, we got to take care of this. We got all this. I said, honey, that's all going to be here. It, it's, it's always going to be, you know, honey, let's just go. Let's go. And I just believe that when we go, God's going to do something. We owed something like twelve to fifteen thousand dollars. Didn't have an answer, but we had three hundred dollars in our personal pocket, so we were gonna rent a hotel in somewhere in San Antonio and sleep, and rest, and eat a lot. <laughs> and as we were driving, we had just passed the checkpoint. We got a phone call from some of the the servants at the church. And one young lady was working in the financial department. She said, Pastor, I just talked to the electric company that we owe $20,000. I found something that they have been overbilling us for the past six years. And they owe, uh, they owe us $55,000. I mean, when, when the head of the electric company, the AEP, when the head comes and sits at your office to negotiate with you because they owe you money, you know God is fighting on your side. You know God is fighting for you. We have story after story after story. Just like that. It's because the anointing will take care of you. God has a I'm not here for myself. I didn't save myself. I'm not serving myself. I serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The word of God says that no soldier goes to the warfare expecting to pay his own way. God will pay my way. God will pay your way. He will equip you. He will empower you. And he will bless you if you will serve him. If you will follow his ways. And that's why you have to walk by faith and not by sight. I thank God that you have great plans. You should have great plans. God does not excuse foolishness and, and uh, lack of wisdom. He does not excuse that. Whatever has been revealed belongs to man. Go get it. But the things that are hidden, that personal relationship with God, that knowing that when you pray and whatever you ask, when you pray in his name, the name of Jesus, that the Father will do it. That is your responsibility to go before God and say, Father, I repent of these bills. Father, I repent of these debts. Lord, I ask you for mercy to wipe them out in Jesus' name. And then watch how God will begin to increase you and bless you because he sees that he could, he, could, he could bless you. He sees that, you, that he could trust you with the increase in your life. And when you learn to live and to walk by faith, there's no limit what God can do. The same faith it takes to bring healing to someone who's sick is the same faith it takes to take you to places of great prosperity. Amen. There's two ministries that we're called to, evangelism and the ministry of giving. 
I want to encourage you to stretch your faith that God's going to bless you, that God's going to prosper you. Uh, whenever you. When you wake up in the morning, you're not going to a job. You're going to serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Whatever you wake up in the morning and all that you do, when you receive your income and you receive that check, you thank God that he blessed your hands. You thank God that he made a way. But then you begin to expect God to even increase you more and more and more. Some people say, well... You know, God wants you to be humble, and God wants you to be poor. That's a lie from the pit of hell. He wants you to walk in love. Yes, we humble ourselves. We under, hum, humble ourselves under the hand of God, and His Word says that He will lift us up. And so I'm not trying to get so that I can have. I'm trying to get so that I can give. I'm expecting to give greatly to the work of the kingdom of God. I'm not getting any younger. How about you? I only have so many years to serve God. And so while I'm breathing, while I'm living, while we are together, let's serve the King. Let's serve the Lord. Let's serve our Savior. Amen. Hallelujah. I was so blessed this past week. This, this, uh, this one young lady, she came up to me and she said, Pastor, I came with my first fruits. She, she had just started a new job and she got her first fruits. And because in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9, it says, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of, your, of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. She believed that word, that as she honored God with the first fruits, that God was going to pour out such blessing that there won't be room enough for her to receive. That God was going to bless her and fill her barns to plenty. How many of you want that blessing upon your life? That God will fill your barns to plenty. The Bible says that when you honor God with your tithe and offerings, that the windows of heaven will be open and that God will pour out a blessing upon you that there will not be room enough to receive it. That is not you losing. That is opportunity to receive spiritual blessings from heaven. Whatever God does in the spirit, it will make itself known in the, in the flesh. If God, when God blesses you, the world will recognize the blessing. Increase will come from the north, south, east, and west. Angels will go and open up doors that no man can open. God will give you wisdom and knowledge. There was this one young man when I was, a teen, when I was in the teen ministry. This, man had dyslexia, this young man had dyslexia. He couldn't not do well in school. He had problems. He, he couldn't think right. He couldn't read right. He couldn't understand right. But every Wednesday, we would lay hands on him. And as we laid hands on, on him, he would go off to school and he would excel in his grades. He would increase in everything he did. He would just be blessed. He became the top of his class. Every Sunday, we, uh, every Wednesday, we would lay hands on him. What, would, um, what am I trying to tell you? Where he had an issue, there was an anointing to take care of him. If you will learn to trust God and walk by faith and begin to expect something great from God, you're going to see it in Jesus' name. But you've got to begin to believe God for great things. Where, what are you working your faith for? Because the Bible says faith without works is dead. If you're just hoping something will happen, that's like throwing a hook in the, in the, in the river and expecting something to catch. You got to put the right bait and you got you to gotta fish at the right river to catch something. You have to use faith and call those things that are not as though they are. You have to get focused on what you're believing God for. If you want to increase in your family's life, you should write it down and take it before the Lord and say, Father, this is what I ask you in the name of Jesus. And the, Father, the Word of God says that He will bless you so that your joy may be full. Amen. Amen. This, this thought of, I don't know what I want. Well, go find out what you want. When we talk, if you ever came to me, Pastor, I need you to pray for me. And I ask you, what can I pray for you for? I don't know. I'll look at you and say, Father, in the name of Jesus... Give him exactly what, the, what he asked for. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. Why can't you have a house paid in full? Why can't you have the car that you desire to drive? Why can't you have good air conditioning in your car? Clothes that you want to wear. Why can't your school loans be paid off completely? You think God is poor? 
You think God is broke? God doesn't need your money. You need to give your money so that you can receive from the Lord. Because it's just opportunity. Give and you shall receive good measure, pressed down, shaken together. Right? That's opportunity. And you give wherever you're at. Look at your neighbor and say, why not you? If you'll get serious with God, you'll see the blessings of the Lord. Every one of you should write down what you're believing God for. Take it before the Lord and begin to expect and watch what God will do. Amen. If you want me to pray with you, I would be happy to pray for you. But you bring that piece of paper with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Why can't you be married? Got very quiet. Got very quiet. Single people, why can't you be married? Why can't you have children? But everybody else is not getting married. You know, all my friends are not married. Well, don't be like your friends. They're going to get old and lonely. I want you to have a bunch of kids, like a bunch of them, just running around. So that when you get old, you're going to have so much joy seeing your great-grandkids playing. The blessing. Of, why can't you have children? <laughs> Say greater things. Greater again, things. again, greater things. Greater things. I'm telling you, the husband is on his way. Amen. The Bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Men are going to start looking for the wife and find a good thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God awfully quiet in this church.